the actual cinemas were packed, you know. I mean, the Sunday matinees, we used to go to them as well. You know, and, and you used to get two films. You didn't get just one film, you get the, an A film and a B film. And then you'd have lads in there who would throw peanuts and God knows what else at you. You all tried to get in the back row. <laughs> It was designed by um, a man called Siebold. Uh, he was Austrian, I believe, uh, in 1911. It, at the time, also at the back on the side, it was surrounded by gardens, and apparently that was open air and they could have shows there. Um, it was called the Kurzel, so along came World War I, and that was deemed to be too Germanic, uh, so that's when it became known as the Dome. Downstairs was a roller skating rink, and upstairs was the cinema, with the introduction of the black and white films. And Mr. Siebold apparently played piano to these films. Uh, in 1921, because of the huge success of black and white movies, then they moved the cinema down here. So upstairs is still a cinema, but it's our small one with 94 seats. It's had a chequered pass. I think it's been closed a couple of times. I think it was deemed uh, dangerous at once, one time. It survived two world wars. Um, then the Dome Regeneration Trust uh, are the people that got uh, lottery money and English heritage money, and then it was, the whole building was refurbished. But it's all in the, in the original colours and paintwork and. I remember mostly l looking at the uh, projections going through the mist of smoke. <laughs> you know, <laughs> everyone used to smoke and it was awful. I mean, I, you're talking about the um, dome. The dome, I used to go there though, but if there was a film that you wanted to see in particular, you'd go there, uh, you know, and and that had a like a balcony down the sides of it, if I remember, and the, and the seats were like angled. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, you always used to say, the people used to say that oh, you go in there, you get peanuts and whatever chucked over the balcony at you when you're sitting down in the stall, well, which is <laughs> which you know typical boys lot. I tell you, I haven't been there for such a long time, and about I always remember the seats. I mean, you'd always get it, manage to get in there. You know, it wasn't like uh, you know, squeeze in and sorry, we can't get let you in. Unless it was a really popular film. I re I remember The Exorcist when that came out. They they didn't. None of the Worthing cinemas would show it because it was nearly banned. We had to go to Brighton to watch that, and there were religious groups outside. Um, sort of giving you pamphlets, Samaritans and things like yeah. that because it was such a controversial film. People come in here and they've lived in Worthing all their life and they'll say, oh I didn't realise that this was a cinema and I didn't realise that um, you could come in and watch, we just thought it was a building and these people have lived in Worthing all their life. Mm -hmm. Another way that uh, people not just in Worthing but nationwide know about the Dome is because it featured in the very well-known film Wish You Were Here. Um, the downstairs was used as um, his lounge or something and the box office was in it and I think the projection room upstairs was used as his bedroom because he was all very seedy and horrible. Um, but yeah, so people still comment on it.
Um, oh, actually, a great anecdote. Lots of old people coming in and saying that they first started courting their husbands or wives when they were however old, back in whatever year, which is really cute. And um, oh, the guy who built the kiosk came in once, oh, and yeah. apparently he's got his name sketched into it, but we couldn't find it. It's definitely, yeah, it's a massive, massive part of Worthing's history, mm -hmm. Worthing's culture. Um, somewhere, yeah, where most of the residents of Worthing have a specific memory that they have, they like to come in and share with us. My dad took me, I couldn't have been very old, and we went to see a film called Old Mother Riley. And it, it couldn't have been that scary, otherwise I wouldn't have got in. But it frightened the life out of me. And I think he swore he'd never take me again. <laughs> it used to be a treat because your mum and dad then were sort of doing all different jobs to rake in the money. So that was a treat to go as a child. Um, I think as we got a bit older, we used to go a bit more. I think that's where everybody seemed to go on a Saturday night to the cinema. That's what you did then. It's not like it is today where you can go out to clubs and what have you that because there weren't that many clubs around then so you'd go yeah you go to the cinema and that's what I did really we, we used to go most Saturdays to see if and I used to go and see James Bond films as well and I couldn't stand them but it was just so, so you'd go out you know you could go to Worthing, you can go to a pub and get a drink easier than you could go to the cinema and get into an X-rated film. <laughs> <laughs> the last bus from Worthing used to be about 11 o'clock and of course all the pubs are closed then and it used to be rocking. It, you used to get on that bus and everyone used to be singing and it used to be like a chorus, although I felt sorry for the drivers. I love it when you first walk in and you see the bright red carpet has made me want to have a bright red carpet for the rest of my life and all the beautiful wood panelling and I guess mainly like so the foyer, the kiosk, that's where I spent most of my time slaving over a popcorn machine. My favourite spot is actually in the big auditorium and I sit right at the back in the middle and that's my own little private space to watch a film. Even the kids that work here um, are aware that we need to take care of this building. Um, yeah, so it continues for many years to come.